Okay, welcome everyone uh, to our webinar today, which is how to overcome a misstep when it comes to inclusion. Uh, we actually had that strap line, you attended, attempted to be inclusive and messed up. Um, where do you go from here? So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I firstly just wanted to say a big thank you on behalf of my social enterprise, Rocking Your Teens. Your donation will go towards increasing resilience, inspiring and raising aspirations in teens. And if anyone wants to find out more about us, please go to www.rockingyourteens.com. We actually have an event coming up on the 13th of November um, where we will be hosting 150 teen boys um, uh, near the Barbican in London. So um, perhaps your organization wants to get involved, perhaps your child's school wants to be involved, uh, please do find out more. Uh, in case you don't know me, my name is Jenny Garrett. I'm an award-winning career coach, author, and leadership trainer. Together with my absolutely fantastic team, um, we deliver impactful development to support those from underrepresented groups to progress at work, as well as supporting majority group leaders to make inclusion happen. My latest practical and empowering book is Equality Versus Equity, Tackling Issues of Race in the Workplace. Um, I think my colleague Tanya will actually share the link in the chat, which is very kind of her. So inclusion is a vital aspect of creating a diverse and thriving environment, whether it's in the workplace or within society as a whole. But what happens when despite our best intentions, we make a misstep in our efforts to be inclusive? It can be really disheartening and even provoke feelings of shame to realize that we've made a mistake. However, the measure of true growth and progress lies not in avoiding those missteps, but in how we handle them. When I'm talking about inclusion, what I'm talking about is creating environments where everyone can thrive, by being themselves. Environments where we don't have to assimilate to fit in, but we can show up with our accents, with whatever class we are, with our ethnicity, our religion, our ability, and the intersection of our identities. And our difference is appreciated. Our difference is celebrated. Our difference is valued. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about inclusion. So today, our panel of executive coaches share their expertise on what the common mistakes are when trying to be inclusive, how to handle it if you are called out and actually learn from those mistakes in a one-to-one -one or perhaps in a meeting setting, how to apologize, which can feel like a bit of a courageous conversation. You can find out more about our amazing coaches on, in the diverse executive coach directory. Um, the coaches in that directory have all proved that they are qualified, they've been reference checked, they have insurance, and they have expertise. They are currently working with some of the biggest corporates in the country. They have lived experience of navigating corporate life as someone from an ethnically diverse background, and they bring their humanity to their coaching. Um, I celebrate and advocate each and every one of them as being truly amazing coaches um, and human beings. Um, and I do really urge you to find out more about them. So after this session today, please do go to diverseexecutivecoaches.co.uk. You can put in any of their names and you'll find out more about them. And most importantly, you'll find out how to get in contact with them so they could possibly be your coach if the chemistry is right and if they have time in their very, very busy schedules. Um, my colleague Tanya will also uh, add their LinkedIn profiles so you can connect with them that way also. Um, and you can tweet about this event. In fact, we don't discriminate. Any social media is wonderful. Now, before we begin, um, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to um, start with a poll. Um, so we can do that, but actually let's get them to introduce themselves first, because I've been talking quite a lot. So I'll start with you, Jess. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, my name's Jessica Rogers. Um, as Jenny said, I'm an executive coach and I'm also a leadership development specialist. And I work with 
clients at all levels from non-officer to director to partner in financial services, global law firms, and also in the public sector in education. And the main crux and the main goal of the work I do really is to empower and embolden people to use their voice to advocate for themselves, for the life and the work that they want, but also to advocate for others. Because I think that's really important. Um, and as Jenny said, I've got a background, a corporate background before I came to coaching. I've been coaching for 15 years. And although the work landscape has changed a lot, the key thing and the thing that really makes a difference is that ability to be able to advocate effectively for oneself, but also to feel that you can create space and create an environment where you can advocate for others also. So that's really important to me. Um, and I'm really pleased to be here with you all today. Thank you so much. Ira. So hello everybody. My name uh, has already introduced is Hira Ali and I am also an executive coach. I'm a leadership development specialist, speaker, writer and activist. I am the founder of the organization called Advancing Your Potential, where we champion allyship programs and inclusive talent management initiatives for lots of different organizations in the public and private sector. I'm also, um, I was going to say award-winning author, but imposter syndrome came in the way. But I am the author of two books, two popular books I'd like to believe, Her Way to the Top, A Guide to Smashing the Glass Ceiling, and Her Allies, A Practical Toolkit to Help Men Lead Through Advocacy. Lovely, thank you. We'll go to Nita next. <clears throat> Hi everyone. And so one of the things I'd probably like to kick off is I always change um, the way I introduce myself because it's ever evolving. So today I will say that um, I've been a DEI consultant for probably about 30 years. Uh, and what I've done over the last um, 15 years or so have added um, uh, executive coaching and now as a supervisor to the work uh, that I do uh, in, in the space um, uh, of organizational change, really. And one of the things I'm really, really passionate about through my coaching is really empowering individuals to be the best versions of themselves. And um, along with that, what I really thoroughly enjoy is looking at organizational systems and dynamics so and group work um, which is where I think my passion is really leaning towards more and more in the, in the work that I do now however inclusion really sits in my DNA so wherever I go I always take it with me so Lovely. Thank you so much, Nita. And last but definitely not least, Janice. Thank you, Jenny. My name is Janice Taylor. I'm really delighted to be here. I'm a career coach, facilitator and writer. I'm based down in sunny Brighton and it is reasonably sunny down here today. Um, I work with individuals and groups, helping people to gain clarity on their career direction and then helping them to find ways in which they can move forward with renewed energy and focus. I'm a great believer in um, resilience people take and people taking ownership of their careers and their futures so that's me wonderful as you can see I've brought together a real powerhouse of knowledge experience um, for you today they've got decades of experience in this space to be able to help you um, whether that's from their writing um, their their research um, their experience supporting people or their own lived experience so there's a lot to offer but we've uh, we've shared a bit about ourselves it would be great to know a bit about you so we've got a little poll coming up um, we'd like to know, uh, you know, sort of your seniority in your organization. Are you junior, middle, senior? Um, is concern about making a misstep holding you back from trying to advance inclusion? And have you been called out for making a mistake when it comes to inclusion? So really want to know your interest in being here so we can make this the best it can possibly be for you. So the, the poll is launched. Um, and uh, please do complete it. So the first question, are you junior, middle, senior? Uh, is concern about making a misstep holding you back? And the final question, have you been called out for making a mistake when it comes to inclusion? It's completely anonymous poll, so do not worry. I don't know who said what, 
Uh, so please be open and honest in the poll. Okay. Just over 60% have completed it so far. Oh, well, that's good. We're at 78%. Lovely. I'm going to give it about 20 more seconds for those who might not have completed it yet. Okay, we're at 87%, which I think is a fantastic um, completion rate. So I'm going to close the poll now. And hopefully you can see the results on the screen. Um, so what we know is that 55% of you um, would say you're in the mid levels of an organization, 38% senior and 7% junior. Um, concern about making a mistake holding you back. 38% of you have said, yes, it is. Um, sorry, no, it isn't. <laughs> and 34% said yes. And 28% say unsure. So it's sort of about third, third, third on that one. Um, and the last one, have you been called out for making a mistake? 45% have said yes. 41% said no. And 14% said unsure. That's quite a high number, 45 percent of you being called out for making a mistake. I'm hoping that that didn't scar you for life and it was done in a way that had care and empathy, which means that you're here just to keep learning and developing. Um, that's what I'm hoping for you. But it's great for us to know who's here and what you're looking to achieve. So I'm going to go into questions and how the format's going to work is that I'm going to ask some questions of our wonderful panel of executive coaches, and then I'm going to open it up to you. Now, while we're, I'm engaging and asking questions, if a question springs to mind, feel free to add it to a chat. If something else comes to mind that you want to share with the group, perhaps some learning or experience of yours or a resource, also do feel free to add it to the chat as well. So we'll keep an eye on it, but we'll definitely come back to the questions towards the end and we'll make sure we leave enough time for it as well. So my first question um, is, what are the common mistakes made when trying to be more inclusive? I'm gonna start with you, Hira. Right, um, so I think if you have made a, made a mistake, so first of all, congratulations, because it shows that you're trying. Most people don't even try. Um, but on another note, um, as individuals or as organizations, but particularly we're talking about individuals here, you are increasingly expected to take a stand on major societal issues, especially if you are working in the EDI space. And what I've noticed is that many well-intentioned allies, um, they are very conflicted about what they should do, and they are afraid to say the wrong things. And I think the poll also suggested that. And it's understandable that you do not want to make any hasty decisions based on intuition alone or limited data, but sometimes inaction can be more harmful and more offensive. So I think it's important for you to demonstrate empathy than caution. And many individuals fail to do that. They fail to respond in a timely fashion. They wait to be aware of all the answers. And I think it's important to know that not People are not expecting you to know everything. Don't wait too long to express your concern, which a lot of people do. And even if you are uncertain and you know, you're still trying to understand the situation, you can be honest, but you have to do something about it. And sometimes on another spectrum, some people say, well, you know what? We work for all identity groups and we do not discriminate. And sometimes you need to understand that some causes and some identity groups do need more attention and more emphasis. Um, because allyship and, you know, being in an inclusion space that you, means that you need to risk, engage in risky advocacy and you need to, um, you know, take that bold and courageous stance. So if you have that stance that, oh, I'm going to please everybody, I'm not going to offend anybody. For example, if I give you the example, I had a coaching client who went to the Women's Network and said, I want to organize a conference specifically for, um, you know, Black, Asian, multi-ethnic uh, women in, in, in the organization. And the conference said, but you know, we only fund initiatives for all women and we care about all women. And that was uh, a, a letdown, right? Because they weren't look, looking at her specific needs. So I think these are some of the steps which um, I have seen, you know, some of the clients have shared with me in terms of making missteps. Thanks so much, Hira. And Nita, what about you? What have you seen in terms of common mistakes when uh, people are trying to be inclusive? Um, 
several things actually. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, key areas I think is the use of language, um, and maybe um, people. I, I think they're probably more sensitive now, but years bygone, people were less sensitive about using the right language and um, and making a common mistake. I myself actually, I remember. I've just thought about this that I was doing a workshop for a large. Um, a pharmaceutical company on supporting them on their LGBTQ initiative. And this is about four, five, six years ago. And I certainly got the language wrong. Um, and the person I was working with, they wanted to be called they, them. And it was really hard for me and uh, to get that right. Um, so I was intermittent with my um, getting that right some of the time. So language, but I worked hard on it and in the end I did, but certainly it, it was challenging for me. The other things I've observed when people are overzealous to show, you know, how inclusive they are, you know, how politically correct they are. Um, and actually they end up saying the wrong thing. Um, and sometimes I've seen where individuals you know, they're so keen to put their points across that they end up interrupting or stepping over what somebody else is saying. So I have certainly have seen that behaviour. And um, and the other thing that I think can commonly make, and I put my hand up with that, is getting someone's name wrong. And I know that is a, uh, um, that is a microaggression. And I've seen, certainly seen, very experienced colleagues of mine get somebody's you know um name wrong and um and then needed to be corrected um in response to that really thank you so much so those are some of those things great examples and we've got a question which is how would you define a mistake or a misstep um and i think that's a, that's a really good question to ask us I think that when we when we think about it and when we're talking about it, it's an act of judgment that's either misjudged or misguided. So, uh, and by that I mean, um, for example, one of one an area that I've made a mistake before is getting someone's pronouns incorrectly when they've told me what their pronouns are, um, uh, and uh, so they've they've clearly said to me, "I would like to be addressed in this way." And then I've still said the wrong thing. And so for me, that's a mistake because someone's asked me to, to refer to them in a certain way and then I and I haven't done it. Um, uh, and I think, it, it, you know, that sort of thing is a <clears throat> is a misstep or a mistake because I upset the person uh, in the way I've communicated with them in the same way that Nita gave that great example, which is actually, you know, getting someone's name wrong. You're, you're not doing these things on purpose. You're not going out their way. <clears throat> out of your way to upset them and um, you don't want to upset them but you might do or you might offend so I, I think that's how we would define a misstep or a mistake something that offends something that isn't right in the eyes of the person that you're speaking to um that you could that you you um committed at the mistake or misstep um in a misguided or you misjudged it or, or you just you just made an error so that's how I would define it. Uh, if there's anything else anyone wants to add to that definition of a mistake or misstep, please do. If not, I will I will carry on with the um uh, with that same question actually, which was very much about this idea of of actually what is it what does it look like? Uh, yeah. So I will go to Janice next. Okay. Um. I think sometimes missteps can be made when people perhaps make assumptions and perhaps sometimes based on stereotypes, they feel they have a certain level of knowledge about one group, perhaps not necessarily taking into account the whole lived experience of someone and recognising that our experiences are more nuanced. It might be that someone's, you know, um, they belong to more than one group, if you like, actually, you know, they could be black, they could also be have a, um, a disability, there could be other things going on. So it's that question about intersectionality and I think sometimes people are a bit scared to ask the question uh, and for me I think it's far better to perhaps ask a respectful question than to assume based on what you think you're seeing so yeah thank you excellent points there and and Jess and I think every everyone who's answering is 
um, giving more colour to what a mistake or misstep <laughs> looks like. So, yeah, what are your thoughts, Jess? Yeah, I, I want to carry on really pick up from where, what Janice has just said. Um, um, and an example I've got sort of a, a misstep or a mistake, which is completely you know unintentional, is where there's benevolent bias. You know, where sometimes we um, can make generalizations that actually reinforce otherness. Um, and an example I've got is I was working with a, a manager recently who had somebody who'd recently returned from parental leave. And there was a big project on the horizon. And rather than um, looking at necessarily who was the best person for the job, they made an assumption that because this person was a new parent, they wouldn't want to be you know, involved in the project. And so they excluded them from being part of this project, you know, on that under that guise of doing what's best for them, thinking about where they are in their lives. But actually, that was be was not being inclusive because the right thing to do obviously would have been to have asked the individual the question. But by doing that, you know, the, the manager was making a mistake really around inclusion. And that's something that we talked about. And I think that can be a common mistake that's harmless, really, from, from their perspective. They, they think they're doing the right thing. But actually, it's back to what Janice is saying, you know, making an assumption based on um, what they believe is a characteristic of that person um, can be a real mistake. Lovely. Thank you. Some some brilliant examples. Um, I, I think this idea as well is that sometimes when you do make a mistake you, you know you can make it all, it all about you when you get that feedback so this idea of it not making it about you is uh, another common mistake that can happen um uh, and I, and I get that really you know if someone says to me you said that incorrectly you offended me I will immediately think oh I'm a terrible person for doing that but you know that's a common mistake because as soon as I'm um, sort of like lying in shame and feeling bad about myself I'm not learning I'm not helping uh, I'm not moving the conversation forward so um, yeah all of the things we've said are, are different types of mistakes missteps errors that can be made um, and I guess it can feel like a minefield actually uh, at times so with that in mind um, what tips do you have for managing your reaction and behavior if someone does call you out. And I think it was about 45% of our audience have had that experience. Um, or you learn that you've made a mistake re relating to inclusion. That could be in a one-to-one -one setting or a meeting setting. You know, um, what tips do you have for uh, handling that? I'm gonna start with Nita. Um, for me, simply, um is uh own it with grace um whilst i'm feeling oh my god i've done something wrong here um but actually not to get in my own way around that and owning it is is, is really important and apologizing because uh, as you said jenny you know we're all human and uh and we all make mistakes um and 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 the key thing for me is not to become defensive uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Over apologising. Uh, I think it's 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 more around just sort of saying, I'm sorry. You know, this was your experience, and uh, and I apologise for it. So I think I would just keep it simple. Yeah, in that regard. Yeah, that sounds really good. And um, yeah, it, it's interesting for the 45% of people on this session today to think, how did they react? <laughs> uh, and how might they react now based on this conversation or on their experience as well? I'm going to go to you, Janice. What do you think um, in terms of managing reaction and behaviour? It's just building a little bit on what you were saying before, actually, about it's not about you not to take it too personally I know that sounds an odd thing to say um, but I think if you do that the chances are you're going to become very defensive and not maybe appreciate the learning that's possibly there available to you you know so it is worth thinking, I think asking yourself what can I learn from this and recognizing that this might be a gift actually that someone's coming to you with a piece of feedback um, because quite often it doesn't happen people don't you know people just walk away and that moment's miss, missed but if someone's coming to you with a piece of feedback, own it, as um, Nita was saying, and ask yourself, what can you look, what can I learn from this? And, and, and look at it as a gift. And it may be that, you know, you can continue this conversation on further on down the line. Um, yeah, that's really it. If someone's had the courage to come and speak to you and share something with you, I think that's a gift actually for you to learn from. So, yeah. 
Fantastic. Yeah, great point and great attitude to have. If you get into that mindset, you welcome it as opposed to um, uh, yeah, feeling that need to be as defensive as you might have been. Jess, how can you build on this? Yeah, I think it's and the key to remember is that if somebody has called you out, you know, it's, it's usually done because they want to educate you in some way. And it takes a lot to call somebody out as well. And so if somebody has, you know, actually um, listen, listen to what they're saying and listen to understand. Don't listen to to justify or to be defensive as the, um, you know, as Janison um, Nita have said, you know, actually take the time to be quiet and listen and give yourself permission to say, OK, I'll take that away and reflect on what's been said. Don't feel you have to respond straight away. So reflect on what you hear and then think about how you can do better next time. And as they've, you know, both of my colleagues have said, you know, apologize. You've made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We're human. Yeah. Thank you so much. Ira, what would you add? Sorry, I'm muted. I think it's important to acknowledge that each one of us has made, committed a faux pas at the workplace. I think we all can recall a moment where we have said something. Changingly oh. embarrassing, which we shouldn't have done. Um, and there's a lot of humility in us that we all will make mistakes. To assume that we won't make any mistakes is naive. Uh, but then once you've been called out, I think it's important to take charge of your emotions because we're all hardwired to re react and get defensive. So, and we are looking for ways to either win or punish or defend ourselves. But always remember. Ah, uh, here you're breaking up. That triumphs intent. So even if you do not create like a positive spin or try and dismiss. Uh, and this might sound um, a bit counterintuitive and superficial, but honestly, prepare a few apologies um, and, and use them. And I'm not saying deliver them, like do deliver them sincerely, but we all know that we're going to make mistakes, right? So rather than at that time stumbling for words, sometimes it's good to be prepared with an apology in mind. What could you say that could make a difference to the person who has called you out? Lovely. Thank you so much. We did lose a couple of points because you froze, but I think I think we got the main main I'm sorry. thing. No, no, it's technology, isn't it? Um, so um our final question before we go out to the audience. How do you not let mistakes stop you from advancing inclusion? So we've, we we know that some about a third of our audience is nervous anyway uh, about making a mistake. Um, you know, a little bit more than that, nearly half the audience have been called out. So how do you not let those mistakes stop you from advancing inclusion? I'm going to start with you, Janice. I think um, show yourself some compassion, actually, and recognise that this is a journey and something that you can learn from as you sort of make your way through. No one has all the knowledge and is going to get it right all the time. So allow yourself some grace and compassion around this, actually, I think, and recognise, yeah, you're learning. I think if you can say that to yourself, I am a learning and I will continue to learn, then you can, can continue moving forward with it. Janice, when we spoke previously, you said something you say to yourself when you... Oh, yes, I forgot, yeah. That's very, very, very poignant. So I almost forgot about that. Thank you, Jenny. Um, yeah, on, on those times, those days when, you know, I've not had a particularly great day, one of the things I do say to myself is, Janice, this wasn't your finest moment. So that's my way of allowing myself some grace. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, Jess, what do, you, what do you think? How do you not let those mistakes hold you back? I think being, a, being prepared to share the mistakes you've made and the learning as well with others around you. So, you know, it could be that there are colleagues who, you you know, you work with, who you can share with each other. You're on, you're on a journey. You're on a, a learning journey. And so when you make those mistakes, feeling safe enough to be able to say, you know what, I made this mistake. But what I've learned is because you're going to be helping others by doing that. Um, and also it's, it, it, it reframes the mistake to actually that it, it's about learning. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And Hira, what are your thoughts? I, I think support is really important. So, um, you know, when we make mistakes, it's it's very natural to get discouraged and disengaged. And I always say this, that allies need allies too. So when 
uh, you feel that the burden of navigating allyship or dealing with mistakes and failures is getting overwhelming, I think you need to seek support from individuals who will stand by you and offer you that, um, you know, solidarity and speak you up in those weak moments and say everything is going to be all right. So make use of support groups of space spaces where you can share with people where you can be vulnerable and uh, yeah, and, and and one thing I will say is reinforce your personal why, because yes, why are you in doing this in the first place? Why do you want to be inclusive? Socially, morally, eth ethically, it's a commendable thing to do, which is great, but it's essential to pinpoint your own personal why, because that really helps when you are facing adversity. Great, thank you. And Anita, your thoughts? I want to sort of build on what Mahira was just saying uh, just now, and I suppose I see inclusion as a very integral value to who who I am. It's not an optional thing, and I think it's um, it's it, it's it's attached to our values. So if we make mistakes, uh, as Janice and um, Jess and others have sort of said, it, I think it's a part of the human condition. And I know in the last you know twenty odd years, I've made lots of mistakes around that. And I, I do see it as a part of what's been said. It's a learning journey. It's a way of recalibrating and saying, OK, how can I build on this? Uh, and what do I need? What kind of support do I need to take me to the next step, basically? So it's um, for me, it's, it's if inclusion is part of your core value, I think it's non-negotiable. And and you know that you will make mistakes around that. And it's what you do with those, as we te tell our coaching clients, is what you do with it, what strategies you use to overcome them is, is the important part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your thoughts, your reflections, um, sharing your experience. This isn't an easy thing to go through. Managers are often recruited or promoted up through their expertise. Um, and to sit in a place of actually, I'm making mistakes. I'm, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what to do in this situation can be very, very un uncomfortable place. Um, and I think in our conversations before, um, I think it was you, Janice, who just talked about sitting in a place of discomfort. Um, and, and one thing I do if I do make a mistake is I allow myself a certain amount of time to uh, to be down about it. Actually, sometimes I might say, oh, I messed that up. You know, actually, I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, cheesed off for just a couple of hours and then I'm going to pull myself back up together but you can allow yourself to to feel disappointed or uh that, that you've made made an error that that's okay I think that's part of the compassion that was being mentioned right at the beginning of the session so thank you to those who have put some questions forward and um, please feel free to keep sending them um so someone's asked how can we define the diversity in different contexts when taking a misstep might be a result of a wrong or non-inclusive definition. Should it be a participatory path itself? So I guess there's something there about this idea of actually, um, you know, a misstep might be a misstep in one situation, but it might be completely right in another. And that you were always making judgments all the time. Um, I was working with two people from ethnically diverse backgrounds recently. One described themselves as a brown woman. Another described um, themselves as uh, someone of mixed heritage. And I described myself as a black woman. Someone could quite easily, I guess, talk about us all as the same, uh, same background, or they could have mis uh, talked about us. Yeah, is that a misstep? I guess it's a misstep if I particularly want to be talked about in a certain way and the language you use offends me. Um, and But I, I do definitely agree. It could be a conversation, can't it? But, mm. but, you know, it can be a conversation. So, yeah, any other, uh, yeah, I, well, I want to jump to another question, but any other thoughts about that context specific and, com and getting it, you know, coming up with it together? Um, I, I personally think that uh, you you can't always get it right because definitions are evolving. And as you mentioned, Jenny, it's personal, right? So somebody would like, for example, some people don't like to be called black, you know, the BAME category, which is fine. And some people still use that category. But I think what's important is to have that conversation and ask the right questions. What is it 
what should I call you? Or what is the right term? And then I think spare the audacity and don't do any half-hearted cover-ups. If you have made a mistake, then it's what's what you do after you make that mistake. Are you genuinely trying to improve that or are you just going to keep making the same mistakes again? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, yeah, something that I'm toying with doing is actually, because sometimes I do, I'm not great with remembering pronouns is saying, you know, you've told me what your pronouns are, are, are please call me out every time I make a mistake. So that, you know, so that the person feels confident in doing that as well. So actually asking for people to point out your mistakes, it can be a really good thing to do um, uh, as well. So someone said here, being dyslexic um, can mean that they have a difficulty pronouncing words and names. They'll often ask someone how to pronounce their name. Is that a mistake? What do you think? I do it all the time, actually, I must admit. Now, I was looking at that question and um, I, 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 I too have to quite often ask people to pronounce their names or to share what I think it is and just say, look, have I done that correctly? And please do just correct me if that's right. You know, I'd prefer to just ask up front. Yeah. And I, I, would, I would agree with that. Uh, I think it's... Um, yes, I think it's it's that for me that's the best way rather than you know try and do somersaults in my head uh, is to ask directly. Yeah, I was working with somebody recently actually who um, had, uh, is of South Heritage, um, um, South Asian heritage, sorry, and he was saying that um, depending on where you are, um, where you are from, you would pronounce his name differently. And so he had decided on the pronunciation himself. So he preferred for people to ask him so that they weren't in two minds as to how to pronounce it or how to pronounce it at all. And I and so I, that was really interesting for me. And so I, I think people want you to ask that question because that, that's that in itself shows that you, you know, you care and you, you, you have respect for their name and, you know, the meaning it might have. Yeah, building on that, um, the program that we're working on at the moment, uh, someone shortens their name. Um, their colleague had looked up their full name. They'd seen it written somewhere, looked it up and then messaged them and said, oh, I've looked up your real name and it means this. Oh, this is so amazing. And really shown, you know, the, the care about their name, which I thought was really, really beautiful. Um, and, and someone once said to me and my boss, found out my name, asked how to pronounce it, and they called me my name properly. And it actually moved me to tears because no one had been to that effort before. Um, so it can be powerful. Some people don't care about their names at all or how they're pronounced. <laughs> um, so it is it is personal. And that, that goes back to that idea we have about um, being, being human. Um, uh, you know, I was sharing an example previously of someone who said something very inappropriate in a meeting and the person who had to call it out was the person who, you know, uh, actually sort of spoke to their eth ethnicity. Um, uh, and 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 I'm curious about that idea that um, if you get called called out in a meeting setting, how people react, how they could react, how they should react, whose whose uh, shoulders is the burden of calling out on. Because I, I think sometimes people don't consider that the fact they they think about the fact that they're being called out, but maybe not the fact that the person who did it really didn't want to have to be the one who did it. And I just wonder any any reflections from from you on on that idea of meeting settings um, of who does the calling out on, on what the ideal reaction might be if that does happen to you in a meeting setting. Well. I personally think that it should be everyone's responsibility and mm -hmm. no single individual should shoulder the burden of calling out people because it's, it's exhausting, it's uncomfortable and sometimes you just don't want to do it, you're not in the right frame of mind. So um, yeah, I think it's it's important to, to create that environment in which everybody is encouraged to call out uh, a mistake. And if you have been called out in a meeting, I think, um, like I said, Take a step back. You don't have to respond immediately. Pause, and then name the emotions. Say, "I'm mortified," or "I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so ashamed of myself," or "I'm sorry." So, when you name that emotion, you can tell people how exactly you're feeling, and then you can then go on to say that, you know, I will think about it. I'll take time to reflect on it, and I apologize. Uh, but being vulnerable sometimes in the moment within the meeting in front of of everybody can be powerful, even though it's not easy it could lend you some grace. 
Thanks. I think Jess wants to say something and then maybe Nita. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, and remember that it takes a lot for someone to call you out. So if if it's um, if they're calling you out against something against themselves, that would have taken a lot of courage and emotional energy. Um, and so, you know, maybe have some some empathy for that. Um, I mean, that, that was a key thing I wanted to say. So it's that stop, take a step back and remember that it's not just about you. It probably isn't about you per se and, you know, your emotions are actually the most important thing here. It's a person who has had the, the you know, the, the misstep against them. Um, so take a step, apologize and take it out of the meeting as opposed to trying to over justify and deal with it there and then in the moment where emotions are high. I just think one thing to add, because um, I was just thinking about a recent event where I was calling somebody, Jeremy, in fact, their name was Jamie, and they called it out. And um, and I, you know, instinctively, I acknowledged what I did. Um, and I didn't care if I was vulnerable because I had, um, you know, I, I did it. And and for me, what was really important at the end of the webinar I did was to go back and, and apologize to, to him in front of everyone. But acknowledgement, I think, is very important when we do something. Yeah. Although I agree with Hera that it is everybody's responsibility, not just one person um, to just call them, call somebody out. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, I do think it's up to everyone to notice more rather than to leave the meeting and say, oh, did you see that happened? Or, oh, yeah. Oh, well done for calling them out. I was thinking it, but I didn't do it. You know, that it does require bravery to step into this place of actually I'm going to shape the kind of organisation that I want to be a part of. Um, and, and I also think, um, you know, something we talked about was teachable moments before. Um, I was working with a, um, a group of senior leaders and the person who spoke, I would say, is generally very inclusive and so committed to the agenda of diversity, equity and inclusion. But they said, oh, yeah, this is Chinese whispers going through the organization. And I, I said, oh, OK, let's pause and think about that saying. Um, if there was someone with that heritage in the room, would we have said it? Would we feel comfortable? Um, and just took some moments to facilitate a conversation around that. So sometimes it's it, it, you can take it away from it. Of course, you might be the person who said it, but also, OK, you know, what about our environment that 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 made me think that it was OK to say that? Or is this language we use all the time that I'm being called out for today? But actually, maybe we need to review the kind of language you use in this organization. So there is a moment there are these moments where you could really capture something powerful that could be a turning point on your organization's journey around inclusion as well. Um, that kind of you owe it to everyone to do something about, to give it the time to have a conversation, to think about how you engage with each other, you know, whether it's banter, so-called banter that might be offending, maybe it's, uh, or something more serious than that. So um, yeah, these- maybe, um, Sorry. Carry on here. Sorry, um, I wanted to quickly add an example. Somebody was sharing with me recently that what they do is in internal meetings, sometimes when the banter gets out of hand, they have um, uh, an internal arrangement amongst themselves. There are four or five allies who rotate the responsibility. So if something inappropriate is said, they will exchange looks and say, well, you know, now it's your turn to call it out. And they do it in every meeting. So every, those there are five or six allies within the meeting and every time one person calls it out. And I actually thought that that was a really good idea. Another organization, they use code words like an organization where they wanted to address sexism and they said Jumanji, you know, every time something inappropriate was said, they, everybody got the hint that this is, this is not right. And they used to change the setting like you do in Jumanji. So I think you just have to establish uh, a way in which everybody is comfortable to call out. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. And bringing a bit of fun into it just brings that humanity as well, doesn't it? Which is really, really lovely. So um, someone said here, your point about calling out reminds me of the moment about the young gymnast and the role of adults present. Yeah, the fact that yes, yeah what would we leave someone to be suffering when we can be there to say something it's everyone's role to do something so um, oh. oh sorry Nita carry on oh was it Janice yeah sorry I was just gonna say just in those moments you're talking about this teacher but there's always those few moments in the, it, I just wonder what the silence is saying if, if you remain silent 
what is your silence saying to your colleague who who may be suffering there? So I think it's worth thinking about just, be, you know, and if it, and again, you talked about sitting in discomfort, you know, there is that discomfort when you have, you step in, but I think if you can learn to live with that, that's when the teachable moments come. It, you know, they're not comfortable. That's why you learn from them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, love it. Thank you so much. So um, coaches, what would you urge someone to reflect on who's either the person who's about to call someone out at some point or on the receiving end of feedback on making a misstep? What would you really want them to be thinking about, reflecting on? Um, yeah, think, yeah, trying to make a difference. And we're actually in National Inclusion Week right now. Um, and the, the theme is take action, make an impact. So I, you know, this matters. It's not just about uh, attending a session and walking away and saying, oh, I've done a little bit of CBD. It's kind of this, yeah, what do we want them to think about so they can take action and make an impact? I'm going to start with you, Jess. Um, to look at their environment and think, OK, you know, what change do I want to see or what do I want to see done differently? You know, so almost to envisage what the difference will be, what it will look like, and then work backwards and think about what steps need to be taken to make that actually happen. Lovely. Great, great open coaching question that can take us to visualizing, drawing, um, bullet pointing, all sorts of things to be able to come up with that, that vision or maybe just using that as a writing prompt and and just writing um, maybe every morning for a week and seeing where that takes us. So that could be really great. Thank you, Jess. Nita, what, what do you think is the question that they should be reflecting on? I think for me, it's about two, three things. It's um, the ability to kind of re reflect in that moment um, what's occurring. The other one is to think about what's the intention do I have? And what's the impact do I want to make? Because um, sometimes, you know, we have we um, may have an intention, but the way we do it has the opposite impact, really. So I think having the intention, uh, which is, you know, if you're going to um, call out somebody, it's really about in service of their learning, uh, calling it out, as opposed to belittling them. You know, um, so for me, that is very important. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the old days, people say, well, you're racist. Well, that doesn't go anywhere. You can't do anything with it. So for me, it's about where do you want it, the conversation to go uh, in regards to that. Great. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, H Hira, what do you think? So I think, look, when you are trying to be inclusive, you will be required to step out of your comfort zone. You will enter spaces or conversations that will make you uncomfortable and uneasy, and you will be making a gaffe or two, and that's absolutely fine. So when the, somebody calls you out, I think it is, many people mention that, you know, look for the teachable moment, but I would say, look at it as an opportunity. Is there an opportunity to improve myself in terms of becoming a better leader, in terms of become, becoming more self-aware, becoming more informed? Um, and finally, in terms of improving my relationship with the person who has called me out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Yeah, there's an opportunity to come closer, to get to really understand the person, for them to be the person who shows you your blind spots <laughs> and enables you to, to notice um, what you haven't seen before. Um, and lastly, Janice, what about you? What do you think um, would be something to reflect on? Um, yeah, I guess I'm thinking if if you're the person calling someone out, actually, I might be wondering, OK, what seeds am I planting here? Because I may not see the results straight away. And, you know, this person may go on for a while, at least to continue to make the same missteps. But I'm a strong believer in planting seeds. You never quite know, you know, a, words are powerful I think actually and if you even if you don't see the results straight away you never quite know what impact you might be having so that would be my it's not a question so much more a sort of observation so yeah words are powerful and you don't know what impact you might be having I, I love that um, and with that in mind I'd like to know from those um, here on this webinar what impact are we having what's the one takeaway 
an action that you're going to take and do or have a conversation with someone on or reflect on as a result of today's webinar. So I'd love it if you'd write that in the chat. What's the one key takeaway from today's webinar for you around, around what you might do if you make a misstep, if you want to call someone out, if they've made a misstep on how you handle that situation? Do type it in the chat because um, we, we'd love to know, um, yeah, what the difference that this is making for you. Thank you so, so much for, for your wisdom, actually, Nita, Janice, Jess and Hera. Uh, there's been absolutely so much learning. Um, I think the big takeaway from me is actually just we're human and we're going to make these mistakes. If we try and avoid them, we're just not going to live and experience life and we're not going to get better and grow. Um, and I, I think that won't be any good for, for any of us. So this is part of the journey. Um, this is just all part of the journey of being better. Um, and and uh, perhaps we'll have some war wounds, but they'll make great stories to tell, I think. Oh, thank you, we have here. Um, someone has said, have the courage to have the conversation and then apologize if I get it wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great message to take from today's session. We have another, think about and practice taking things out of the environment if appropriate, e.g. in a meeting, many people have high emotions. So I, I guess that means you might talk about it afterwards, catch up with the person afterwards. Uh, we've got here, it's everyone's responsibility to call out a misstep, wonderful. Um, I might be clumsy at times, but that's okay, yeah. Um, we all make mistakes, so apologise and be vulnerable. Um, I made a mistake with a colleague a few months ago and didn't feel brave enough to address it at the time. But today has made me reflect on the fact that even though it's a bit late, I should be brave enough to address it. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Um, um, and yeah, I want to say thank you to everyone who's engaged in this webinar. The fact that you came in the first place is a brave step. Um, I want to say thank you for those who were sharing their, their nuggets of wisdom in the chat as we went through. Really appreciate that as well. And keep thinking and keep taking action. It's just so important. So thank you for attending. Huge thanks to our coaches. Um, do remember to um, look up the diverse executive coaches uh, directory and seek them out. Um, you got a sense of them, didn't you, from today's session, a sense of their wisdom, where their wisdom comes from. Um, uh, and so in, in many ways, you, you have some chemistry with our coaches already. The directory connects coaches um, with corporate organizations. So uh, if you have a coaching pool in your organization, why not think about engaging some of our coaches to be part of that pool so you have as much choice as possible? Maybe engage with a coach with a different background to you to challenge your thinking and bring some uh, creativity and innovation into the way you do things. Or perhaps you would like a coach from a similar background to you because then some things don't have to be over explained. Whatever it is, do engage with them. To find out about the work I do, you can go to jennygarrett.global and please feel free to sign up for my newsletter. I only send messages once a month. It's not, not too much, um, uh, but, and hopefully what I do share is useful. And feel free to check out my new book, Equality versus Equity, Tackling Issues of Race in the Workplace. Our next event is called Managing Energy and Avoiding Burnout or Recovering from It. It's on the 25th of October. I know that I've met a lot of people who are really stretched at the moment, really finding it hard to keep their motivation and energy up, feeling overwhelmed with their workload. Um, so it would be a helpful webinar if that's you or if you know someone who's in that situation. Thank you so much for joining us. And lastly, we have a little survey. Um, we always like to know what you thought about the webinars, um, what could make them better, what you might like us to talk about in the future. So do take one to two minutes to complete uh, our survey. We appreciate that. Thank you. I want to say thank you for Tanya, who's been actively managing the chat really, really well. Um, and uh, I appreciate her beavering away in the background. And a last thank you to our coaches. Thank you, Nita. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Hira. And thank you for everyone who attended. Take care, everyone. See you next time.
Thank you, Jenny. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jenny.